When building a rifle, there are two types of optics you can use, either a long range or a red dot scope. They both have a bunch of pros and cons to each, which we're gonna go over today. All right, so what we have here is we have a magnified optic. This is a variable one to four. It's by far from the most powerful optic, but it's what we have available right now. So this is gonna be our magnified optic, AKA long range optic. Uh, over here we got Neotech. They, uh, you know, there's controversy with them, but for general purpose, if you're not going overseas, they're decent, they do hold up all right. So uh, this is what we're working with, and now we're gonna go over some of the pros and cons of both. So you wanna run a magnified optic. Why would you wanna run a magnified optic? You're shooting at further range, get a little more distance, it's easier to see the target. A, for instance, 10 power optic will make a 100 yard target seem 10 yards away than the naked eye. So you can really get a precise, clear view from a magnified optic, which is good if you're shooting at longer range. Uh, to give you a basis here, this is we've done a review on this is the LMT in 308, and then you got an LWRC in 556. So uh, realistically speaking, this would be a better long range rig. You're putting a larger bullet out there. It's heavier. It's harder to carry around. So uh, on this would be more ideal for a magnified optic. Then you got a 5.56, which is, for, you get, granted, you can reach out very far with 5.56, but on here we have an EOTech, uh, better for enclosed, it's a little lighter. And now why would you do one, one over the other? Well, EOTech, any of the red dots, there's a decent amount of companies that make them now, and a lot of them are pretty good. They're not as expensive as they used to be. Red dots for enclosed are pretty much king. You've got an illuminated reticle, it's battery powered, and you can very easily hit targets in close, it's easy to pick up, because it's brighter and a lot of them are variable with the brightness, boom, you come right up on target and you can see it quickly, it's good for closing. At distance, you can get very good at shooting a red dot, and you can hit targets at distance, you know, but that's training, that's a skill set, that's a bit of natural talent. That's putting, if you're shooting a submit and angle group with an EOTech, you're doing, that's a lot more rounds than trying to shoot a submit and angle group with a magnified optic. You have to be just, you have to be better if you're trying to reach out. There are people who've reached out five, six, seven hundred yards with a red dot on a silhouette target and hit it. Um, take skill, they're good at it. So red dot is obviously better for in close. Magnified optic better for distance this one is nice and we'll get into why I like this one later but if you're running a 10 power optic and you've pretty much compromised your ability to shoot in close you're not going to be trying to shoot a target you're not going to be able to really see the target if it's in a house if it's in you know a short distance it's really meant for further out it's a distance one um, that's why you just don't see a magnified optic on a close quarters type weapon. It doesn't make any sense. Pros and cons of each. Obviously, con for the red dot is it takes batteries. It's if you run out of batteries, granted some of them have, I mean, just a massive battery life to them, and they don't. There you go. A lot of these have just a ridiculous battery life, so you don't really have to worry about it as much. They last forever. But eventually, its battery will run out. There, you can get a optic, a magnified optic. If it's a fixed power scope, there's no real moving parts. There's nothing going on. It's a very robust, and red dots are too. But you get a solid fixed power optic. It's a very robust, simple design that's been around forever. So longevity. Especially if batteries aren't easy to come by, you know, end of the world, yada yada, stuff like that. Um, I like a tube optic just because, you know, if there's no batteries, it makes it better. Now, granted, they do have tube optics with batteries that will illuminate, but it's not like a holographic projection. It's just there's a glass etched piece and it lights up. So you still have a viable optic if the battery dies. Red dot, your battery dies. It's time to move to irons because that's your other best option because it's useless if the batteries are dead. Unless you carry all of the spares. I carry a couple extras. 
and that's waterproof. But but that in the middle of a firefight might yeah. be an issue. But good thing about red dots, um, a lot of them you can co-witness with the irons. So even if you bring that weapon up and your red dot's dead, you can just automatically transition to irons. When I shoot red dots, um, I almost always have the irons up because that way I just look, okay, red dots don't work, I can just go back to shooting irons. That's one of the things about the pistol red dots that are becoming popular is they're great. Pe a lot of people are liking them, but if you don't have co-witnessing iron sights, it's a lot harder to get a picture. But all you need, co-witness the iron sights, and you just shoot it like a regular gun, and the red dots is there for follow-up shots. So, batteries, no batteries. Longevity definitely wins here. There's nothing, there's no real maintenance. Technically in this one there's a tritium insert to glow, but this thing still works without it. It don't matter. This one, you run out of batteries, there's nothing you can do. It's, it's a paperweight. What about cost? Cost? Uh, I know the EOTech's about 500 bucks for yeah. this model. This was about a thousand, but like I said, this isn't talking on specifics. Is that with the mount or without? Without the mount. So the mount's what, two, three hundred? Uh, I think I paid two hundred for it when I got it. Okay. You, uh, but that's just like I said, this is just kind of a type. This is a variable mid range optic. So just on these, yes, this is, there's a price difference, but companies like Vortex have been making things that are a little cheaper. They're still great. There's cheaper options if money's tight that with, are still viable. With the red dot sight specifically, you guys, I'll link a video right here to a TRS 32 by Bushnell. That's a that's a true uh, red dot where a red dot is suspended within the glass. EOTech and Aimpoint and some of the better quality, more expensive red dots are actually laser projected so that uh, the red dot isn't lost in your background. Like if you're shooting against something red, for instance, or if uh, you have glare or too much light going into it, you can lose the red dot on a cheaper $70 model versus obviously an Aimpoint or an EOTech where it's laser projected, you're going to keep that reticle no matter what your background is. Now let's talk about how we can find a happy medium between a red dot and a magnified optic. First and foremost, magnified optics can go, they vary. If you're going for a 10 power, you've, if you've got a 10 power fix that's really a single purpose optic. This one at one to four power, if you run this thing down to one power, you can pretty much run it like a red dot. You look, you find the aperture, boom, boom, you're good to go. It's quick. And like I said, Vortex, I think, uh, terrible with models, you have to forgive me. Um, but Vortex makes one that's similar to this. I think Jerry Michelak and a couple other guys run them, or it might be a loophole. One of the companies makes an optic similar to this, and they run it. They all run a red dot. They run this at a low power. And that way, if at low power you can run it like a red dot, you got a target further out, you sweep it up to four, four and a half power, and you've got a little more magnification. So that makes this a very versatile type of optic. You're losing, in a way you're kind of losing it going back to the red dot though, because past a couple hundred yards, if you don't practice a lot with it, you end up having a hard time hitting targets way out. Whereas if you have something that might be in three power to ten power, you, at 10 power, you're really, 10 power is a good size. You can really reach out there. You can see targets further out. Four power, you got to work with it. It's not as easy. So happy medium, you're not going to be reaching out to a thousand. I'm not saying you're not. There's very skilled people, but a thousand yards with that is a little more difficult than with a 10 power, but it's a happy medium between this and an EOTech. Other side note, EOTech, aim point, they all have compatible magnifiers. So you can get a red dot and... It looks like there's another optic behind it that flips out of the way, but it's not an optic. All it is is just it's a monocular. And you flip it up, and it gives you, I think they had go up to like three power magnification, where you can run a red dot, but you're getting magnification out of it. So that's another happy medium option. Uh, and you're back up into the $1,000 range. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're spending money on it. I think they have a po' boy version. I think that's one that LaRue makes. It's like 200 bucks, but st and which is good, but still, that's... UTG's got an $80 model. Don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting spendier. So what do we end up with? You have pretty much a close-in carbine that if you practice a lot with, you can shoot at distance. Um, Travis Haley's been out there shooting 600-yard targets with 300 blackout with an A point. So you can get good. It's just a little more difficult. Then you got a magnified optic, no batteries needed. You can put them in there in some models, but not needed. 
Uh, obviously, you can see a target better because it's got magnification. Then you've got full power magnified optics for, you know, 1,000 yard shooting, further hunting. And they're great for reaching out, but if you're using it as a one size fits all, they're not that good because you end up not able to shoot in close. Granted, they do make side mounts that come out like this where you can put a red dot on there and stuff, but we're just, we're talking about the basics here. So, out of these three, mine set up with this because it's a good happy medium. It's kind of a, it's not a spork. Sporks are useless. But it's a good starting point where I can go, okay, can I hit something at 10 yards? Yes. Can I hit something at 300 yards minute a bad guy? And I'm not saying I'm the best shooter in the world. Yes, I can. So, I like the setup. If I'm running like a car gun or something, like if I was, if this was a truck gun for me, I'd run it with a red dot. I got no problem with red dots. Like I said, I have a Aimpoint Micro that's been on for like three years on low setting. It still works. They're great. Batteries aren't the big deal that people make them out to be, but you just have to be conscious of it. You know, higher maintenance, change it out. This thing, fire and forget. You buy it, you slap it on a rifle, you zero it, and you're good. Um, last little tidbit that I forgot about that neither of these have is... For long range shooting, you, this doesn't have a quick ad, quick adjust turret with any pre-calculated stuff on it. So like if I take these off, come on, you're kind of, it's harder to adjust it. Like there's no, re, it's harder to adjust it to zero. You, you zero it, but if I'm trying to reach out to 700 yards, there's a little more guesstimation in it. Whereas if you have a properly zeroed rifle with dope for the for the ammo you're using and you've got the, everything figured out I can look out there and go okay this target's 700 yards out and crank it on up to 7 and whatever my calculation is and get a super precise shot. This one, now you can zero it and I guess you could try and make a dope calculator for it but you gotta remove these, you gotta adjust it that way so it's just not as practical for long range. So it comes down to what do you want? And what your use is. And what your use is. You know, if I'm using a, if I'm using a car gun, if it's a, you know, 10 inch barreled M4, yeah, you know, put a red dot on it. That's kind of what it's designed for, quick blast. And if I'm using this as kind of my Swiss Army be all end all, great optic for it. Uh, if I'm building a hunting rifle and I live in a place like Nevada where the mountains go on forever and I might have to take a thousand yard shot, 10 power optic. I'm not using it for self defense. It's dedicated. So those are the differences. There's some of the cost better, the pluses and minuses to all of the above, and it's kind of up to you to make up your decision. Links to both these will be in the description if you guys want to check out more information. Other than that, leave comments below. Here we go! As always, if you made it this far in the video, you are the absolute best. I hope that you enjoyed it. It was an absolute blast making it for you. If you did enjoy it, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button right in the middle of your screen. I've also put two videos here that I think you might like. Throw me a thumbs up, and as always, thank you so much for watching.